Hey guys, what's up? Kate from Beach Moto here, and today I'm here with Nathan May, who happens to be a motorcycle photographer. Nate's actually shot some great photos for um, Motorcyclist.com, Revzilla, Ride Apart, um, Cycle News, ADV Pulse. I can keep going, the list just goes on and on, and I'm pretty sure you shot for MotoGP, which was freaking awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just tell us a quick background about your photography. It's one of those things where it's almost like the family business a little bit. My father was a photographer. I grew up as his assistant, carrying lights and loading camera backs and doing all that fun stuff. I actually started out in video. So I did more um, video production, commercial production, uh, some documentary work, that kind of thing. And then as we started doing more, it sort of marrying the video production work with the sort of motorcycle adventures, that led to start sort of taking a lot more photos of bikes. Uh, that led to opportunities sort of for publishing and all that stuff. And so now I've been doing this for, uh, I guess it's been about five years sort of focused on the photography side of it. It's fortunate that you were able to do that because as we know, nowadays there are so many aspiring photographers. Yeah. Um, anyone with a cell phone now thinks that they're an aspiring photographer. So this video is actually for you guys. <laughs> so this is not gonna be uh, a video about you know, having a $4,000 camera um, and how to use it better because as much as we all wish we had that kind of equipment, um, most of us don't. So um, we're going to answer some basic photography questions for sure. our, our common folk who are taking photos uh, with their cell phones, okay? My dilemma is when I'm taking photos of my bike is always, uh, how do I take it? Do I take it straight on? Do I go from the back? Do I go from the front? Um, and there are certain angles where the bike just looks like horrific. Yeah. Um, is there a, like a basic, this is the best angle for any bike or does it, is it bike dependent? Uh, I wish I could say like, oh, sort of a low three quarter angle is always gonna work. Um, and it's not the case. Every bike has its own personality, much like people. Um, everyone always knows, oh, this is my good side. You know, bikes <laughs> have their good sides and their good angles. So part of it is, is looking at the bike and trying to sort of, in your mind, see which way it's gonna, you know, kind of plays. And some bikes have really distinctive features, single-sided swing arms, you know, or the crazy exhaust on like the F4. Mm -hmm. And you want to showcase that stuff. Right. So that kind of, those are sort of easier things to, to kind of um, key in on. There are some sort of tricks. I think getting low, uh, you see that a lot. <laughs> Name a road, I've probably been on the on the gutter of it just because <laughs> it's, you've got to get low. It sort of makes it more dramatic. Okay. Um, I, I think the only caveat to that would be when you're trying to put it in uh, a certain place or kind of establishing a, a sense of it, but, you know, like making it part of, uh, you know, you want to showcase the big, vista behind it okay so you're talking about the backdrop so let's yeah. talk about that for a second so um when it comes to backdrop uh if you want your bike seen obviously you don't want to be around anything too busy right if, if the the main focus of the photo is the bike and not the scenery right um what kind of backdrop i guess would be ideal for something that showcases just your bike and you know nothing else nothing too distracting there's a i think a lot of opportunity for things like finding just you know, alleys, uh, we, we've shot a lot of sort of uh, detail shots of bikes just in random alleys because they have a little bit of um, patina or sort of stuff that's interesting. You just want to find the cleanest spaces you can. Parking garages can be good for that. Light gets to be a bit of a, a challenge in those. But um, yeah, that's the other thing I spend a lot of time doing is driving around alleys looking for kind of hidden places uh, that you don't normally see driving down the road to, to take a photo. Um, and would you say like that darker tones are better than, let's say, you know, some alleys have like really cool um, graffiti walls, uh, which look awesome, but when you put your bike in, in front of something like that, it tends to like sort of get lost in the background. So would you say like toned down um, colors would be better to bring out that motorcycle? Um, yeah, it, it certainly if you're really trying to focus on getting the best shot possible of a, of, of a specific bike, then yeah, probably um, cleaner, more muted tones uh, are better. I, I've shot a lot of bikes though against graffiti and I think the, the key to that is getting a little bit of standoff. Mm. So it's not like right up against the graffiti and everything's just all in focus. Um, if you get a little bit of, away from it so that it's sort of like a background, then that that relief helps 
um, helps sort of create separation. Gotcha. Okay. Easier if you have a camera that has a uh, variable aperture, so you can sort of blur the background out. But or, or I guess uh, on the phones now the uh, it's like portrait, portrait mode, por okay. portrait mode or whatever it can can so do an okay job. Yeah. So basically, bl blurring out your background would be the best way to highlight your bike. And, yeah, and you, you still know, get that sense that you're like in an urban environment or kind of if that's what you're looking for. Um, or the, the other trick is to find a clean part of that wall where there's some graffiti and you get the bike against that and then you shoot at either an angle or something like that that has, so the bike's here nice and clean, but there's still some, some of that flavor, some of that, um, that personality showing through. Gotcha. So um, just as important or probably more important in photography uh, is the proper lighting, right? <laughs> I always hear photographers talking about, you know, how, um, how important it is, always looking for that perfect light. Yeah. So again, because um, most people, you know, who are trying to get photos with their phone don't have the luxury of carrying around, you know, uh, you know, reflectors and light setups. Um, they're relying on just natural light. Um, what would you say is the best time of the day uh, to get outdoor photos? Uh, where there's not too much light and not too little light, um, you know, and what is the prettiest light that transfers onto a photo? Well, they call it golden hour for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, I don't think there's any uh, any confusion about that one. It's it's certainly that late afternoon or sort of uh, mid to late afternoon light is where it, when you can start doing some uh, some magic. Uh, there's also time to do that in the morning, but it's. Uh, I always feel like the, the tone of light in the morning is different too. I don't know. Like, I would agree. Yeah. It's like it, it, uh, but and you got to be up pretty darn early to to catch that usually. But um, yeah, certainly the the hardest time is is really harsh, um, you know, high midday light when the sun's directly overhead. It's just not very flattering. There's not a lot of shape to the bike. Everything gets very flat. Um, and if that's your only time, if that's or... your only option, then you there are some tricks for for shooting into that. I mean, one would be um, not placing the bike itself in direct light. Like if you can have it, you know, say you're on a, you know, you're at the rock store, you're out at some place, get that under some shade where there's light reflecting off the ground, which mm -hmm. provides some fill, and then you can have. Then you're just trying to balance the light between what's filling it and the you know, scene you're trying to put it in. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, uh, you know, getting out of the direct light is, is, is mm -hmm. going to be better for you. And you always want to make sure that, you know, let's say that you're shooting in the middle of the day, uh, you definitely never want to shoot like directly into the sun, right? So you want to try to make sure that uh, that sun is somewhat, you know, yeah. like behind you away from the bike. There's a, it can be done I tend to shoot into the sun a lot, really? um, but there's a trick to doing it. And like, let me show you a perfect example of that. Here you have an example of um, a few shots shot straight into the sun. And what I'm doing is using the edge of the tire to start flagging up the sun. So here it's pretty, pretty direct. You can see everything's blowing out. Here it's flagging a bit of the sun, which allows you still to get that sun sense, but you're actually able to see now details on the bike. Gotcha. And then it's even, you know, more pronounced where I'm cutting into it. And so here's probably the most balanced of them all. You still get that sense of the sun, um, but really the tire is flagging out mm -hmm. most of it. So you're getting that sense of light, that sense of glow, but you're able to see details on the bike. And that would work, I think, just as well for, with your cell phone as it does with a you know, a camera where you're controlling the, the lens. Now, is there ever um, a use for like the flash during the day? Because obviously everyone knows that if it's if it's dark um, and you want to light the room up, you use your flash. But um, is there any reason that anyone would use a flash when it's not dark and during the day? And does that help it, um, in any way or does it, you know, not do it much at all? The on-camera flash on these things is just, especially with bikes because they're reflective the on-camera flash is so direct you're going to just get a lot of really straight balance and it's also a very small point of light that's being shine you know sh uh, it's shining on the bike and the way you get a lot of that sort of really soft light um, that you see on really 
nice studio photos. The reason the light is so soft is because there's a really big bank of light, mm -hmm. and this is a flash, mm -hmm. but it's shining down on it. And it, so I would say the on-camera flash, there's very little reason to ever use that. Interesting. You're, I think your effort, but I also like to shoot more available light stuff anyway. I just think it feels more natural, more expressive. I think the challenge there is to, you know, make sure that you're putting the bike in a position that um, that takes advantage of that natural light versus trying to overcome, because you're just never going to overcome the sun with a little light in your cell phone. <laughs> I gotcha. Okay. Um, now, so far we've been talking about still shots, but um, let's talk about action shots a little bit. So for me, those are by far the hardest ones to get, you know, um, it's like 99% of the time I, when I try to do action, it just comes out blurry. So yeah. uh, what am I doing wrong and how do we fix that? How do we go about taking better action shots? You know, when your friend's out there on a the corner and you know, you're getting ready to drag your knee through that corner, what do we do to get them to make sure that rider yeah. isn't focused? Yeah. Um... So with a cell phone, obviously it becomes a lot harder. I think there are things you can do to sort of um, to maximize that effort. One is to try and make sure that the camera doesn't start getting crazy with focus. I think you know if you're sitting on a corner, the the problem with a bike going around a corner is there's there's a lot of angles happening, mm -hmm. and it's not consistent. It's one thing to just get a you know, on a straightaway, something like that, where the bike is just moving past because it's one plane that, that that bike is moving through. But as soon as a bike starts going through a corner, you've got all kinds of different vectors happening. You know, it's 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 getting closer to you and it's also leaning over. So timing all that stuff, you have to eliminate as many of those constraints as you can, or, or sort of variables uh, as you can, so that you can um, hopefully help the camera not get confused. So one of the things you can do is, you know, the touch to focus, mm -hmm. touch the focus on the camera, like sorry, on the corner, uh, prior to the rider entering the camp, the corner. Oh, interesting. See, I always yeah. thought that you touch the right, like, you know, if he, as soon as he's in frame, you touch the rider to get yeah. the focus on him and sort of try to like yeah, follow. I, I don't have much, I mean, Certainly on the, the dedicated cameras now, those autofocus systems are pretty awesome. Tracking autofocus, on a, I've never tried using it on my iPhone. I don't even know if it has it. But uh, you, you call that trapping, where you put the focus on a point and then mm -hmm. wait till the rider hits that point. Interesting, okay. Um, and even if you move it from that to the rider right when he's going through it, you might, um, what it does is the, the the phone or the, the camera isn't hunting as much. Mm -hmm. It's already in the right sort of vicinity, so it's not uh, going. Oh, what is this? What is that? You know, and, and starts messing around. So, um, so trapping um, is one way to do it. The other thing is trying to control that motion blur, and that has to do with just moving with the rider as he's going through the corner, um, so that. And that's what you know. You like to see those called dragging the shutter or slow, you know, longer exposures where the there's some motion blur and you get a sense of that movement. And I think it's important because motorcycles um, inherently, I mean, they are a, a, a mode of transportation. They they look better when they're moving. Mm -hmm. I think they're sort of like, you get that sense of energy. Right. And trying to optimize that just by uh, sort of, or accentuate that I think is, is obviously a, a cool thing. Uh, and I, I know I've asked you about this, like, you know, uh, previously I've asked for, for your help with the motion shots um, and you uh, you were talking to me about uh, making some adjustments on your phone and I'm trying to remember, is it the exposure or was shutter speed? There was something that you were telling me to adjust and then um, not all phones have the option to do that, but you mentioned that you can actually use apps to take photos yeah. that do have more adjustability. Um, can you remind me what that was and sure. what, what the preferred app is for you to do that? Yeah, most of that motion blur comes from shutter speed. Shutter speed. So being able to control that is important. Now, the challenge is that the, um, the longer that shutter is open, the more movement and stuff can throw off the focus of a shot. Mm. So um, with, a, I know like the iPhone itself, you can't control or at least not my iPhone. Um, I use a separate app, I use Lightroom, which Lightroom. is a, an Adobe um, product. 
and it, the camera on light, in Lightroom allows you to adjust the shutter. The challenge with that is uh, iPhones have, and I'm assuming most other uh, camera phones have, or phone cameras, have a fixed uh, aperture. Okay. So that's how much light is sort of being let into the camera. And that makes it a challenge because you start going to a longer uh, shutter it's letting in more light and then it's overexposing. I gotcha. So you have to be careful with that. But, um, you know, if you can get that shutter down a little bit and then move with the bike as he's moving, and that's where it just takes some, some practice and some effort is to be able to learn to move smoothly as that bike is coming through and sort of get that. So basically you're keeping that bike at the same place in the frame and you're frame the, the camera and then everything else is getting blurred uh, is the the hope you know the effect that you're going for gotcha um like obviously you know we wish every photo we take was uh top-notch quality right away but as we know that you know a huge number of photos that get posted anywhere now uh need a little bit of editing so um without you know the luxury of having expensive editing apps on your laptop do you have favorite phone editing apps that uh, that you would recommend or that you use so i don't really use many filters or anything like that i just more like balance the colors and the saturation and try to make it feel like the experience that i had when i was there um, so you can do quite a bit with the uh, in-camera editing the, the big challenge becomes the difference between, you know, when the, the camera shoots in something like, basically an enhanced JPEG. So mm. it doesn't have, you lose some of the latitude that the camera is actually capable of doing. So something like Lightroom, which isn't very, it might even be like limited, but free, you know, um, at least right now. And it definitely comes, if you have a, Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, it comes with that. Okay. Um, if you have the desktop Lightroom, so, and you can get that for like $9 a month or something oh. like that if you're editing mm -hmm. a lot of photos. But um, it shoots a, a DNG format, which is like a raw format, and mm -hmm. that has the full sensor, basically everything the sensor captured when it took the photo, and you can push that a lot more. So. Anytime you can shoot in those in, in a raw format, it's better. It just gives you more latitude to fix things after the fact. Okay. Um, Interesting. I, yeah. I didn't know that you can shoot in a different you know format just by downloading an app. So that's yeah. uh, that's a good tip. Um, now a tip that I have from personal experience is that if you want to get good photos of your motorcycle, don't get a black motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> if you happen to own a black motorcycle, um, yeah. or if you're like me and you have a black motorcycle, black suit and black helmet, um, how would you recommend taking photos of that? Because I know black is one of the hardest card yeah. uh, colors to photograph. It is a, that is, I mean, it's, it is kind of a joke with photographers because it is just impossible to get, um, not impossible. It's just much harder to get, um, good shots. Uh, and it has really do with that contrast. Cause it's like, everything is so dark on the motorcycle. You're trying to expose things and it's just gets blown out. Autofocus can't pick it up cause it doesn't have anything to kind of lock onto. Um, there isn't certainly not from a motion standpoint that just requires more work when you're doing a static of a bike then you have to pay much more attention to the balance of like light and what you're trying to see and what you're um in the bike itself because if you want any details from that you're, you're gonna need to to watch that so it becomes more important to get that out of things like direct sun one of the tricks that we didn't mention earlier that, that can be useful is to um, find a building or a wall that can act as a really big balance that can shut, bounce light off of it to reflect something. Oh, okay. Because that makes it less um, directional in that sense. It's like kind of, and then you can get more of those details. Um, and you know, so it might be like, oh, you pull it up here next to the wall. You're not actually shooting against the wall. You're shooting out to the space, but the wall is bouncing light onto it. So, mm. so it can kind of 
show off some of those details that you're going to miss otherwise. I got you. That's a good tip. Um, and then another thing that uh, I've heard many times is um, th this thing called the rule of thirds, right? So uh, I don't know, you know if you guys are using an iPhone or I think Android has it as well. There's an mm. option to turn on a grid um, on your camera screen. Um, do you, have you heard that expression? And if so, what do you think about the, the rule of thirds? Uh, yeah, basically if you d divide the frame up into uh, quadrants, you have these, this grid that's over the frame and you, there are these points where those lines intersect. Okay. And those are essentially visually where there's a fo where you want your points of interest in the photo. So it's where the lines meet, not in the middle of the square. Right, and, oh. it's, and it's a challenge now because Instagram uh, which is where a lot of these photos end up, uh, has a bias towards the center of the frame. So what would be compositionally a better looking photograph if it was, say, going on a wall in a print is not, you know, where the bike is going to center up mm. you know, or be in that frame is not where it's going to be basically on Instagram because like then Instagram shows it in, the, in your grid and it's like off to the side or right. whatever. So you have to balance that a little bit. And it does become uh, kind of a challenge when you're shooting uh, stuff now because, you know, hey, I like this photo. I want to put it up on my wall. Well, if it's dead set in the middle of the frame, it's, it, there is this, I guess the underlying idea of beyond comp composition is that there's very few things in the world where it's just, things are just dead center. It's kind of like a weird, it's like slightly awkward in that sense. And so having things... You know, and especially with motorcycles, because there is this idea of momentum or velocity kind of inherent in a motorcycle. Just taking a static with it straight in the middle of the frame kind of loses some of that energy. Mm -hmm. So you tend to, you know, um, especially especially motorcycle in motion, I will offset a little bit to the side. Um, you know, if it's coming through this way, you might move the bike over here to a little bit to have a little bit more space because it's going that direction. You want that visual sense. Otherwise, if it's too close to the the other side, it starts to feel crowded. And mm -hmm. it's like not something you can say just by looking, it's just something you feel. Okay. And uh, so the rule of thirds can just be a good way to help visualize um, composition when, you, when you're starting out. Gotcha. So yeah, I totally, it's completely useful to have those up, especially as you're learning. Um, yeah, I just turned the, the grid on my camera back on, you know, so yeah. I can uh, practice it a little more. Yeah, uh, and there's, I, I can actually, we can look at a couple examples here. Yeah, let's um, see. So here's an example. Like, this is, this is purely a test shot for a new camera. I wasn't trying to compose it. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, like, it's boring background, it's everything else. But you can see what happens when it's just in the middle of the frame. Right. It's just kind of like, eh. Yeah. Um, and then when you move to a sort of composition thing, so this is now framed like that, if you just give it a little bit of space, so now I'm moving the, the sort of focus point so that these are your thirds, right? It just has a little bit more balance. Okay, yeah, I um, see that. Those things are guides, and so that's probably a really a good way of... Oh, yeah, that does make a difference. Yeah. Um, interesting. So if you look at the composition of this photo, you'll see that this is sort of one of the kind of points of, you know, the cross sections where there's, where there's interest and then there's sort of this road in this upper quadrant. Mm -hmm. So you're creating a dynamic energy between the rider coming through the frame this way and then kind of telling a little bit of story in this space up here. So it's just ways to visualize how you're framing something to tell a story more effectively. Interesting, that, those are really good tips. Um, so, and I'm sure the more you learn about photography, the more you start to sort of judge people on their photography. <laughs> so, um, what would you say are some of the most common mistakes that you see like amateur photographers make? Um, Probably over editing their photos is one that bugs yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> and I, mean, I used to do it, I'm guilty of it. No, no, so, it's, I mean, so, I think we all have, we've gone through those phases where uh, things get a little pushed. <laughs> filter, um, filter, yeah, filter, filter, filter. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, I, I tend to, with about, I mean, I guess with the caveat that a filter or effects that you apply to it should be about telling your story. Um, so, you know, you might accentuate 
the light in something where you're like, hey, sunset was amazing. It's one thing to kind of just make that a little bit more present. And it's another thing to suddenly make saturation all the way to the, the you know, to the floor. And it's just like, looks like someone uh, spilled some crayons on your sky. I think trying to capture the reality and because uh, generally speaking, I think people, we, we lose sight of how cool reality is. So, that's true. That's very true. Um, I definitely have a bit of a bias there. Uh, I think some of the things we touched on earlier, the, the framing is, is certainly important. You see this with people doing photos, you know, hey, can you take my photo of the Grand Canyon? You know, me at the Grand Canyon? And it's dead set in the middle. And it's like, that's just one of the things. Move it over a little bit, you know, get that uh get that shot of the person or the bike and but get some of that grand canyon so i, th I think not making it dead center is is something that uh, you see a lot and i think also that I, I mentioned it in the very beginning which is getting down getting some other angles um or getting high you know go up on the hill and shoot down on it you know there's there's just be a little more creative with the angle you see so many people out on the ride and it's just like oh here we are here's my bike and it's like Drop down a little bit, and get that shot, you know, because it just work it, those legs. Yeah, everything just comes, it just hap, you know, pops a little bit more, and I think that's something easy that um, it doesn't take much to, to pull off. Yeah, awesome. Well, Nate, thank you so much for being here. Uh, sure, I'm of actually course. super excited to uh, go take some photos uh, of my bike now, or you know, other people's bikes <laughs> with my new knowledge, uh, and hopefully get a little better with the composition because that's definitely an area that um, I think I like and I'm always like, there's my bike and that's all you're looking at. Yeah. So um, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully we'll see some rad photos of your bikes on Instagram. Yeah, looking forward to seeing what people do. Ciao.